afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the QCTV3's live coverage of the annual Christmas Festival Parade from downtown Quincy. I'm your host this afternoon, Betty Campbell from Quincy Community Television, and joining me for today's look at the Christmas Parade is uh, former Mayor Frank McCauley and now School Committee person Frank McCauley. Welcome, Frank. Thank you very much, Betty. Beautiful day for the parade. I believe it's the 43rd annual parade. And um, we have just seen the classy clowns go by the start of the parade. Yeah, they start the parade a little bit early and warm everyone up for the uh, coming events. That's right. I guess it's going to be one of the biggest parades ever. Uh, Mike McFarlane is the new general chairman of the parade. He succeeded George White this year. George is the parade marshal and is going to be honored for his many years of service. Oh, that's great. Uh, I think we ought to tell folks what they can expect today. They're going to see the parade from beginning until end. They're going to have a quick look at the festival events that have happened all weekend, and which have been many. And then they'll go live to the awards ceremony from North Quincy High School. Also today joining us uh, on our team, Frank, is a Quincy High School teacher, uh, uh, Jackie Rama. How could I forget Jackie? Jackie, welcome. Hey, Frank, happy holidays to you. It's a beautiful day here uh, in Quincy Center for this parade. All kinds of excitement. As you can see here, we're going to be talking to some of the, the children here today, and uh, we're looking forward to a great day. The weather has been great. I think that uh, maybe uh, our Grand Marshal had something to do with it. He's done such a great job over the years, George White, but it sure is a blessing on him today. So we'll be seeing you back and forth during the parade, talking to some people. Thanks, Jack. Thanks, Jackie. We've had our first look, Frank, at what's going down the street, and that's the classy clowns, but this year it's going to be extra special and wonderful. The festival committee has been working long and hard for this year to put together this parade, and one of the special events is going to be the BC Screaming Eagles going down our street. That's correct. I think this is the first year we've had the BC band. Um, they're quite well known in the area. They play at all the BC home games, and we're looking forward to seeing them, and hopefully this will be a a annual event for them. We hope to have them on our schedule here for the parade in years to come. Uh, I think we should say that the band is a 156 member band and it's being sponsored this year by the Hibernia Savings Bank which is located here in Quincy. And uh, here are some of the comments of Mark Osborne, the Chief uh, Executive Officer of the Hibernia Savings Bank. I believe Well, I, I guess we'll have some comments from Mark Osborne in a moment, Frank, but um, here come those classy clowns back down the street. They are doing a performance back and forth here in front of City Hall, a uh, colorfully dressed uh, leader there. Yeah. The children absolutely adore the clowns. <laughs> say that I'm very pleased to, for our company to be sponsoring the Boston College Screaming Eagles Matching Band in the upcoming Christmas Parade as a 1970 Boston College graduate. It's a, a fun thing for, uh, for me to do. Um, in, in our company, we have over a dozen Boston College graduates, and they're all excited about this. A couple of years ago, we attempted to build a float for the Christmas Parade. Um, wanting to participate. We're a community uh, bank. We have a community operating philosophy and as the largest bank headquartered in Quincy, we like to be active in our in the community's affairs. So we, our employees attempted to build a float and the best thing that happened to us was that the parade got rained out because we determined through that process that we had absolutely no ability to build floats in this company. Um, and 
we were trying to we were debating what type of things we could do that would be unique to in, be a, a unique event in, in the parade, not you know the type of things everybody else does. And one day I was sitting at a football game over at Boston College. I'm a football fan, obviously, and. Um, it just occurred to me that you know maybe we could get the, the Boston College band to march in the parade. I, I knew the uh, president of the band, who was a student. The band's run by a student council, just as all the other activities are. And when I spoke to him, I was surprised to find out that, in the course of the conversation, that the band does not get traveling funds uh, in, in their budget. They're only allowed to travel to one away event a year. And they do, I was told in, in that conversation that they do match in events from time to time uh, to raise funds so that they can travel to away games whether it be football or basketball or hockey um, so it, it, generally the problem is their schedule uh, and speaking with the band director it was we were fortunate that this year their schedule allowed them to be here for the Christmas parade um, I'm really looking forward to it I think it's going to be a lot of fun um, all of us here at Hibernia Savings Bank in Quincy uh, are again very proud to be the sponsors of the Boston College Screaming Eagles Matching Band and the upcoming Christmas Parade. And we hope that everyone in Quincy enjoys their presence. Um, we also hope that their schedule permits them to be here next year because we'd love to do it again. strange to Quincy parades. Uh, Dot Hill has been here with their band many times before. She's also uh, went to Moscow with her band one year. I was going to say, she's a world traveler. When uh, Jake Coma was national commander of the American Legion. Let's hear the Waltham Post Band. They bring their own transportation, Frank. <laughs> Pleaser, the uh, crowd responding to Dot Hill as she marches proudly down Hancock Street today. Coming into view now is the transportation, followed by the George Bryan Post Color Guard and the Ladies State Auxiliary VFW Color Guard. To our view now is a great committee. These are some of the folks that put this parade together every year, Frank. I think you know some of them. Yes, there's Herb Fontaine, the uh, formal voice of radio station WJDA. Uh, we don't have as many in the uh, group this year. Uh, well, I think there's, a, there's Bob Noble. There's Bob Noble. He's been here many years as a member. Right. And that's Gene Healy and Bob Noble going out of view. That was the festival committee. City Councilor Ted De Cristofaro. Being driven by Being Agnes Trilcott, who is also so a member of the committee, and uh, Betty De Cristofaro, uh, Ted's wife, in the back seat there. Yeah. City Council will miss Ted. This group that you're seeing now are uh, the sponsors of the Quincy Festival Parade. Of course, a parade like this can't go on without good sponsorship, and. I know we're all thankful to have this wonderful parade go down the street, and we thank all these folks who have helped put us together. Yes, their uh, contribution is very important to the success of a parade, and it's ha good to see so many sponsors. There seem to be a few more every year. Yep. Well, coming into view now, we have another color guard unit. I believe it's the Nickerson Post out in Squantum. Squantum. Three eighty two. Ah. And we want to say that coming into view at this time now with our cameras is the Canton Legion Post, another perennial uh, crowd pleaser. This is a 
17th appearance at the Canton Legion Community Post. It's under the direction of Jack Judge. American Legion um, color guard going by now. Our set from West Quincy, one of the largest uh, American Legion posts in the state. Okay. And coming into view is our Grand Marshal, and we think he's a friend of all of ours this year. He's George White. He's been the chairman of the Quincy Festival Committee for the past 15 years, and he's been on the committee for 30 years. And I believe we have our man in the street, Jackie Reamer, about ready to speak to George. Uh, we're going to toss it over to you, Jack. Come over here, George. I'm here with, uh, with George White. George, this must be a great day for you all the years you've been here. Uh, how about this weather? Someone's looking at you up there. Well, this is super. The good Lord took care of us today, no question about that. How many years is it, George? You've been here, 35? 30 years on the committee and 16 as general chairman. Well, it's a great day for you, and uh, the city of Quincy is out here to say thank you to you today. Have a great thank day. Thank you to all the people, too. You're great. Okay, George. Good luck. Bye now. Have a Super parade, George White. Yes, a lot of congratulations should go to George for the work he has done over the years. He stepped in on short notice. I think it was 1981 when George Fade, the general chairman at the time, died unexpectedly. He's done a great job ever since. Well, I think this is one of the events that people have been waiting for, the Hibernia Savings Bank sponsoring the BC Soaring Eagles as they come down the street. This is a first, and hopefully it won't be a last for the uh, Quincy Christmas Parade. James Sheets, last year's uh, Grand Marshal, I believe, Frank. That's right, Mayor Sheets just re-elected to a fourth term. We also have uh, Senator Morrissey, Councilor Peter Colson, who's going to be the next president of the city council. There's Steve Durkin. Steve Durkin. And retiring council member uh, Chuck Phelan, who I understand is a new dad. That's correct. We have Mike D'Amico and Pat McDermott, two new city councilors, coming into office in January. I see. Okay, and I see uh, Timmy Cahill and Steve Tobin and Bruce Ayers. And a new school committee person, Christine Cedroni, decked out in the festive red. Right. Dan Ramondi, a present school committee member, will be returning to the city council in January as the Ward 2 councilor. Great. Frank, I think we have a special uh, interview with Jackie, our man in the street, with the BC band director. Let's go to that BC now. band director, Mr. Sebastian Bonnieto. Sir, well, first of all, welcome to Quincy. Uh, this is quite a day for us in Quincy. Uh, how does the BC band feel about being here in our illustrious parade? Well, we're very excited. This is our first time in the Quincy parade. And, uh, I used to do this parade when I was uh, conducting a high school band, uh, so it's uh, uh, a little bit of a deja vu for me, but it's a wonderful parade, and we're delighted to be here. The BC band, obviously, very active. Uh, not only around here but around the country during the year uh, well yes we are uh, we've been to the um, 
uh, the uh, uh, kickoff classic at the Meadowlands uh, for uh, a preseason uh, game with the football team. Uh, we've traveled to Syracuse, and uh, of course we uh, traveled to Manhattan for the uh, Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, which is a couple of days ago. Well, once again, we want to welcome you to Quincy. Thank you for coming, and I want to catch up with the rest of the band. Okay. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank, thank you very you. much. Okay, back okay, to you. Okay, thank you, Jackie. That was great. And uh, I know everyone in Quincy is certainly enjoying that Boston College band. Uh, coming down the street, we have the Council on Aging van, uh, driven by Brian Buckley, the director of the Council on Aging, and the chairman of the Council on Aging, John Noonan, is marching beside it. Good for you, John. And we have some Norfolk County sheriffs on motorcycle. Sheriff Cliff Marshall in the car coming in just before us. Uh, he looks wonderful. It's great to see you, Sheriff Marshall. And I believe we have another color guard unit coming down the street. I can't quite make this one out. Can you? Oh, it's the Boston police. Is that correct? Boston police color guard, I believe. And we have another special treat coming down the street. I can hear them, Craig. I don't know if you've quite gotten the sound of it yet. But this is another new unit to the Christmas Festival Parade. I hear bagpipes. Yes, you do. It's the Boston Police Pipes and Drums, the Gala Column. From Boston, Massachusetts. The, began, the band began in 1991 after Jerry Hurley's funeral. Jerry was killed in a bomb blast in Roslindale. This is the only police pipe and drum band in New England. into a uh, view in just a couple of minutes. Well, okay. Quincy 2000 float right. coming. And let's see what the theme of that is for this year, the Quincy 2000 organization. It's Christmas at home. Coming into our view right now, I believe, is the theme winner. This year, it's uh, Miss Bonnie Ray of Quincy, Mass, and her theme for the parade was Christmas Wishes on Parade. Thank you, Bonnie. They receive a lot of entries, I understand, in oh, connection I, with this yes. uh, Being on parade. the committee, I know they did certainly receive plenty of, uh, I think, well over 150, I believe, this year. And it was quite a job selecting just the right one. But I think we came up with a real winner. Here come those Clydesdales, Frank. They make looking, a wonderful sight coming down the street. Looking pretty sharp. young ladies who have the task of being the pooper scoopers. Honor, yes. Coming down the street now is a special um, uh, 
special unit that was in the Flag Day Parade this year for the first time, and we liked them so much we invited them down to Christmas Festival. It's the Worcester Sound and Light Calliope. Let's enjoy that. Music always reminds me of the flying horses. Ah. Coming into our uh, cameras now are the elementary school poster winners. Uh, that's part of the festival is a poster uh, contest that goes on in the ele 16 elementary schools in the city. And we have the car with the first through third graders in. And the first prize went to Lindsay Anders of Marymount School. Second prize to Cole Cahill of the Bernazani School. And third prize to Tina Marie Matson of the Montclair School. Here comes the Holbrook Band, Frank. Yes, another one of the many bands in the parade. I think they've been here before, have they? Uh... This is our 26 years, Mr. Ed Myers wrote to me. And let's enjoy the Holbrook High School Marching Band and Color Guard. years it's quite a commitment to this parade. It certainly is. Okay this is the Quincy Elementary School poster winners who are in the fourth and fifth grade and they in first place is Lisa Sadovich of the Bernazani School. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Jennifer Gordon came in second from Marymount and Marie Baudouin of the Bernazani School was in third place. To our camera view now uh, is a caddy detachment, color guard, Marine Corps. Very active uh, Marine Corps detachment here in the city of Quincy. I believe they're on board the USS Salem, aren't they, Frank? They could be. Yeah. And uh, they've done a lot in the city. I know they were active in bringing the Marine Corps, Drum and Bugle Corps here a couple of years that, ago, that's which correct. was a spectacular sight. Coming into our camera view now are the uh, annual Marine Corps drive for Toys for Tots. This is an annual event every year, which they put on to get toys for those uh, young people who don't always have, parents have the wherewithal to, to provide them with the toys. And I know for years, Quincy people have been very, very generous in providing it. and filling up these trucks. Yes. The Marine Corps, Toys for Tots, Seasons Greetings. for a moment now and go to our man in the street, Jack Raymer. He's got some reaction from the children in the street. Go. We're here with some special people. Guys, where are you from today? Halifax. Halifax. You came all the way from Halifax. This is your first parade? You've been here before? And what's your name? Suzanne. Suzanne. And what's your name? Ashley. Ashley. Tara. Tara. And? Amanda. Okay. What do you like best about the parade? You see those Clydesdales when they went by? Did you like them? Yeah. Yeah, what do you like best? I like the horses best. The horses the best. How about the floats? Look at this guy. What do you think of him? 
I think he's neat. Okay, how about wishing everybody a Merry Christmas on the count of three, okay? One, look up at the camera. One, two, three. Merry Christmas. Okay, thanks, guys. There you have it from Halifax. Now back to Betty and Frank. Thank you, Jackie. And coming into our view now is the Bourne High School Marching Band. They're called the Canal Men and ladies, I'm sure. They've been many years in the Christmas parade. Yes, once these um, bands and drum and bugle corps get in, um, I think they enjoy it so much they return year after year. The band is under the direction of band leader Bonnie Beers. Community Council and along with the Broadmeadows Middle Schools um, float, a school for Iqbal. Housing Neck Community Council organized way back in 1954, very uh, active in uh, keeping tabs on what goes on in the city of Quincy, particularly pertinent to things going on in the House Neck Peninsula. Well, I think they've gone a little more international this time, and with the uh, work of the youngsters from the Broad Meadows Middle School and Ron Adams, they've spearheaded a fundraising effort for Iqbal Massa, the 12-year-old, spoke at the Broad Meadows School about child slavery uh, last spring. The children also participated in the USA Today's Make a Difference Day on October 29th, donating a third of the monies raised to help build a school in Iqbal's hometown. The House Neck Community Center staged a jail and bail, a bake sale, and many, many fundraising efforts, and we support them in this. Ron Adams has just done a terrific job as a teacher. He's had many projects ongoing uh, in the Quincy school system. And this is a fundraising effort that will go on, I think, until the end. We've got a camera view, unfortunately, is the Randolph Color Guard. But coming into our camera's view now, I believe, is the Norton High School Band. has also been many years in the uh, parade. They're called the Lancers. 50 members perform in several, in many parades throughout the year, Halloween parades and so forth, Veterans Memorial Days. Uh, they've participated in the Christmas Festival Parade annually for many years, the Falmouth Christmas Parade and St. Patrick's Day Parades and others throughout the uh, state of Massachusetts. And we welcome the Norton High School Band. We don't have the snow today, thank goodness, yeah. but uh, it's a perfect, it, it's a perfect song for the Christmas season. Uh, and coming into our view now is a favorite with the children, and it's Ronald McDonald. Ronald's been in the parade many years. <laughs> He's waving to the cameras. First of our antique cars are now moving in into sight. This is always our favorite part of the parade, isn't yes. it, Frank? Yep. First one, I think, is a 1930 uh, Model A Ford. Ah, I think you're correct. Or at least I hope you're correct. 
I know my cars. I okay. Think. I'm getting to that age. <laughs> I think the next one coming into our view is a 1915 Ford touring car. <laughs> it's red. <laughs> she doesn't want it. Okay. Uh, coming down the street now, we're just in camera. Um, View is another color guard unit, and we believe that it's the city of Cambridge color guard unit. I believe they've won several awards for their uh, participation in other parades as they come down the street, and we welcome the city of Cambridge color guard. Right behind them, I don't know if you can quite make him out in the camera view now, but there's another special little favorite that's a real crowd pleaser, and that's McGruff. Crime fighting dog with the MBTA police. There goes McGruff. He's waving to the crowd. The children love him. getting a float in view now, Frank. Yes. And it should be the Quincy High School float. Quincy High School has participated many years. And their theme this year is coming home for Christmas. high school graduates who have um, done an awful lot in the city and worked on the lighting for, for Veterans Memorial Stadium a few years ago. Oh. Some young people probably almost certainly from Quincy High School yeah. waving to us. Uh, they look like they had fun putting this event together, the uh, float. I think that's a lot of the uh, the fun part of it is getting the float together, working on it as a team, and then getting it out on the parade march. And right behind the Quincy High School float, we have the Quincy High School band, President's Marching Band. I saw them down at the football stadium, Betty, march. on Thanksgiving Day. I did too. Exciting game. It was. For the Quincy fans. Yes. <laughs> school band has never missed a Quincy Festival Parade, according to the director, Robert Corbiello, and proud to have them in the uh, parade once again. school cheerleaders coming into our view now, Frank. Yes. They had to put on a wonderful show under the direction of Donna Sullivan on uh, at the halftime of the uh, Thanksgiving Day game. That's right. And here comes the president's marching band. Thank you. We're here with the homecoming queen and her court. Is the king here too? And who are we? So please tell us who you are. Suzanne Santeris. Okay, you're on the court. Yep. Marianne Ashworth. Yes. 
Rich Testa. Rich Testa. Well, you guys having a good time in the parade, or uh, what do you think about this? It's fun. Having fun? Yeah. yeah. You got to watch out when you get down the other end of the city now. They don't start throwing things. They won't do that. Really. <laughs> no. All right, best of luck to you guys. Thank you. Okay, back to you, Betty. Okay, and we thank you, Jackie. And right behind them, I'm not quite sure who these young people are. I guess they must also be from Quincy High School. They're probably king and queen of the court as well. And I'm sure that's very exciting uh, for those young people. Must be their senior year. And coming into view, we have another antique car. I'm going to leave that to you, Frank. Well, let me see. That looks like a 1923 Model T Ford Coupe. Uh huh. I, uh, if I'm correct. Okay. I'll defer to your judgment, <laughs> sir. <laughs> those must have been quite the cars going down the roads in those days. Oh, they're quite special looking. It's amazing that people keep them in such wonderful condition and enjoy them every year. Into our uh, camera view now is the Star of the Sea um, float. Yeah, I believe it's called, this year their theme is One World, One Voice. And the young people and of uh, the Star of the Sea Church in Squantum uh, are busy putting this float together for us. And they're singing for yep. us. And we welcome them. Yes. A lot of young people out on this float singing. Right. One world, one voice. Next band coming down the street is, I believe, the Douglas. Uh, I think it's a junior senior high school marching band. No, middle senior. It's a middle. They call it Douglas Middle Senior High School Band. The band has recently participated in parades in Rosendale, Boston, Worcester, and Woonsocket, Rhode Island. Recent accomplishments include first place rankings in many of those parades. Frank, that these uh, bands are all being judged, and there'll be a, um, an award ceremony immediately following the parade at North Quincy High School, and folks can turn into Channel 3 and watch the award ceremony and root on their favorite um, uh, band as it's gone down the street here. Yes, that's uh, an annual event. As soon as the parade is over, that um, award ceremony begins. The mayor will be down there, and uh, the winners will be on it. Okay. The next float coming into sight is the Coke Club float. It's a gingerbread house. And I, the Coke Club has been active in the city of Quincy for many years and been in the parade for over 30 years. It was founded by the late Richard Coke. It's also, he founded the Flag Day Parade. That's correct. It started off as a softball team, the Coke right. Club. Back in the um, late 40s, early 50s, I remember them playing the House Nick softball teams. Right. And and it, I know my children participate in the Coke Club. And so did mine. And many children in the city. Uh, they also do some Christmas charity work and raise funds for scholarships. Ah, that's the Situate safety car. Does it look real safe to you, Frank? <laughs> well, it, the front is popping up there a little bit. We have that every year. And now another antique car, a 1923 Model T Ford Coupe. Looks more like a station wagon to me. Like a Woody to me. Yeah, it looks like one of the old station wagons. And a 1926 uh, one-ton Model T truck. Now, I think there's a reversal there. I think they've got their numbers reversed. Mm -hmm. So that is, the, uh, that is the coupe. And the other one was the Model T truck. 
you to our camera view now is the Citizens Bank float. Citizens Bank, uh, I believe this is a, the second year they've been involved in the parade. And they have, uh, the float participants are people from the five Quincy branch offices. Um, oh, I see, they've been in the parade for four years, but formally under the name of the Boston Five Cent Savings and the Quincy Savings Bank. Last year, they had a battleship modeled at the USS Salem, and all the floats are being designed by Bob Roger. And this year's theme is Citizens in Toyland. And that certainly looks like Toyland. Very colorful float. Interview is another group that's uh, a new addition this year. Although they had a um, uh, color guard last year, this year they've gone a little larger, and it's the Shriners organization. And I think we're in for some very special treats with this group. There's a motorcycle unit, a motor patrol unit. There are clowns. There's a marching band. There's a Legion of Honor, and uh, we're very fortunate to have them. They have the Burns Hospital in Boston. That's true. It does such wonderful work uh, with Burns uh, victims. And they also do work with young children. Uh, they also do some work with children with orthopedic problems, too, throughout the country. I think we're going to go to our man in the street, Jack Ramo, in just a minute as we get ready here. And uh, we see the Shriners motorcycle people and the Shriners marching down the street. We're going to go to Jack Ramo. Okay, we're here with Mr. Fred Shaw, who is with the Shriners, and uh, first of all, Fred, welcome to Quincy, Thank and you. can you tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, who's here and uh, some of the things they do? We have the Shriners here from Aleppo Temple, which covers the eastern part of uh, Massachusetts. Uh, we have six units here this evening. The Clowns, the uh, Legion of Honor, the Motor Patrol, uh, the uh, Oriental Band, which is a crowd pleaser usually, and the... Uh, the clowns, the Aleppo oh, clowns. Well, I'll tell you, I think everybody is aware of the great work that the Shriners do, and we want to welcome you to Quincy again and uh, keep up the great job they do for the kids. And Thank you. Welcome again. You're always welcome to come and see our new hospital. Okay, we'll be there. I've been there, and we'll be there. Oh, great. Okay, Fred, Thank thanks you. so much. Thank you. Back to you, Betty and Frank. And thank you, Jack. Uh, right now, They certainly are. What do you think of those shoes, Frank? <laughs> they uh, look like uh, some of the movies you see about the Middle East. Right. Well, they're called the Oriental Band, and they were certainly colorful. We next have War Shriners in a motor patrol, which was organized in 1971. There go those band down the street. This is the motor patrol coming into view now. 22 members, 11 autos, including replica 1901 Oldsmobile, and the scale model of the Shriners Hospital is somewhere in view as well. This is quite interesting. Yes. Hopefully we'll be seeing them from year to year now. Wow. They certainly are. They, they add a lot to this. Yes, they replica certainly do. of the hospital. Hospital for children. And Frank, coming into our view now are more Shriners, and it looks like clowns. Yes. 
Yeah, they have a very calm, complete unit uh, coming here today. Well, we were very lucky to have yes. Look at this little guy coming down. I see the train. He's a motorized clown. <laughs> I'm sure the children are going to love this. Whoa, what was that, Frank? Sounded like cannon in the distance. <laughs> it sure did. Do you think it was those clowns? I don't know. Bunch. Look at who's he walking? Yeah, the invisible dog. Right. <laughs> Poor John Blue. Coming into camera view now are more Shriners, the Colonial Militia Minutemen, which were organized in 1974. Uh, they do nationwide parades, and oh yes, it says here, the firing of the muskets along the parade group will spark the imagination. They're loading up again, uh, oh boy. Betty. We might get another uh, volley here as they come past. The old-fashioned muskets. Right. And drum demonstrate the colonial beat as they march down the street. I think we're about ready, Frank. Oh. Parade has moved along very smoothly, Betty. Oh, uh, no gaps. Uh, no. Nope. The organizers. We want to uh, thank those people uh, who organized this and put it all together for us. That festival committee really knows how to put a parade down the street. I've been at the uh, in the parade for many years, and the, it looks like organized chaos up there when you're up there at School Street. But uh, Bill Morrill somehow puts it all together and gets everybody out at the right time. It sure does. Coming into our camera view now is the Boston City Band from Franklin, Massachusetts. Uh, these are musicians that get. They must be either high school or college graduates, and they're just a group of people that get together that want to play their instruments and keep marching. chosen the Dreamland Express, and it certainly looks like a dreamland. I'm sure they have many Christmas wishes. Wooded School has won many prizes, first and years. second prizes over the years. Uh, they recently celebrated the 100th anniversary of the founding of the school back in 1894, last year. Wow, ah, that's interesting. Well, happy holidays to the girls from Woodwood Schools. antique car coming down the street, Frank? Yes. It does, although I remember it very well. Yes. <laughs> what does that well, say? And that's a 1961 Plymouth Fury convertible. I, I was, was in my childhood, I'm sure. I was <laughs> afraid this was going to happen. Right. Uh, we have a 1956 uh, coming by right now. I believe that's a Dodge. <laughs> you know you're getting old when the antique cars are in your vintage right. years. We won't say that, will we, Frank? We're just getting better. Coming into view Quincy. now is the Quincy Partnership. This is the fourth year they've been in the parade. They've donated the welcome signs, welcome to Quincy signs throughout the city. They've illuminated many of the historical buildings, and they co-sponsor the uh, Quincy Flag Day Parade. And their theme is, I don't know, but it looks wonderful with lots of children, and it looks like Miss to me. Part 
partnership has done a lot of good work over the last few years, uh, sponsored some lighting of the buildings in Quincy, and uh, hold a number of fundraising events and translate that money into improvements in Quincy. Coming into our camera view now is the Whaling City Junior High Band, marching band. Um, they represent three junior highs in the city of New Bedford, I believe. And they've been in the parade many years. They're ranked nationally. And it's a very large unit, 130 uh, band members and flag carriers. And uh, we look forward to enjoying them. New Bedford is one of the largest cities in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and you can understand that when you see the numbers of people or young people who are involved in the uh, color guards and in the bands that come. Right. They put on quite a show. Marine School Silver Dolphin Drill Team from all the way from Groton, Connecticut. We're taking on an interstate uh, component here. And these young men are in the Naval School at uh, Groton, Connecticut, submarine base. That's and a familiar uniform, Betty. I wore oh. it for well over a year when I was a young man uh -huh. in the United States Navy. This group performs all over the country, and we're very fortunate that they chose to come to Quincy this year. into view. I believe it's the Quincy Center Business and Professional Organization. I can never quite get that right. QCBPA. Thank yes. you. And it's, their theme is When You Wish Upon a Star. I see Marilyn Manning waving at us now. She's the uh, director. We're going to go to our man in the street at this moment with uh, Jack Raymer and have him talk to some people that are just enjoying this parade. Over to you, Jack. Okay, we're here with some happy people, right? You having a good time today? Yeah. Uh, yeah. What is your name? Samantha. Samantha. Where are you from? Quincy. You're from, you came all the way from Quincy to come here? Yeah. <laughs> and what's your name? Christine. Christine. And your name? Danielle. Danielle. And what's your name? Uh, and what are their names? Whitney and Wesley. Whitney and Wesley. Are you guys having a good time today? What do you like best I at the parade? It. I, I like the cheerleaders. You like the cheerleaders? Are you waiting for anybody special? Santa Claus. Santa Claus. Are you? Well, how about if we all wish everybody a Merry Christmas on the count of three? Let's look right in the camera. Ready? One, two, three. Merry Christmas. Okay, Betty and Frank, back to you. Okay, and we're back, Frank, and I believe this is the Rockland safety car. I don't know about 
these cars, Frank. I don't think they look that safe. One of those Volkswagen Beetles that was so famous and so plentiful on the road years ago. Right. I had one. <laughs> I enjoyed it a lot. That car is called Auto the Auto. to site now is the Immaculate Heart of Mary School Band from Still River, Massachusetts. They've been marching for seven years and participate in 15 to 20 parades a year. They represent the excellence of our Catholic school tradition and they come in first in a division of competition of parades throughout the state. to site has someone special on it from your family. Is this the Jack Conway float? That is the Jack Express? Conway float, yes. This is Jennifer Logue, the dynamic young public relations director for the Conway country and her two beautiful children. Are they waving at Grandpa? They're waving at somebody. <laughs> Jack Conway's been in the parade for many years. <laughs> Now we have a 1926 Model T Ford four-door sedan just going by, followed by a 1927 Model T Ford Roadster. we should talk about some of the things that we've seen. We've seen the BC band go down the street and the Shriners, I think they've added a lot, but some of the perennial favorites that we haven't maybe mentioned are the costume characters that march down the street. Right, we've, uh, we've seen a lot of people who have participated in the past. We're glad to have them back, but also these new people, the BC band, the Shriners, certainly add a lot to the, uh, to the uh, parade. And of course, uh, once again, I hope that we'll see them again in future years. Right, right. Um, the costume characters this year, I think uh, we've seen Mickey and Minnie, and we've seen uh, dogs and bears and all kinds of funny. And we should mention that these are Quincy youngsters that join in and participate year in and year out and look forward to being these costume characters and bringing joy to the children of Quincy. They enjoy it, and of course, the kids enjoy it. We have a band coming into sight right now, and it is the Pittsfield High School Band. They've been in the parade for many years as well. Quite a ride out from Pittsfield, I would imagine. That's, that's a long way to come. Exit three on the Mass Pike. Is that what it is? That's, that's what where it I is. I bring my son to school at exit three. <laughs> The band consists of 30 woodwind and percussion players, 12 color guard uh, members. And, and we welcome the Pittsfield High School Marching Band.
Another antique car, 1915 Model T Roadster. I think in our camera view right now, we see a trolley going by and filled with young people from the Bernazani School who uh, performed the other evening at the lighting of the city festival that happened right at the Church of Presidents Friday evening. We thank those young people for participating. Coming into sight now is the Chicopee Comprehensive High School March and Colts Band. And it's been in the parade for 28 years. The students take pride and work hard to participate every year. camera view now is the Quincy Hospital float. Wishes for a healthy community from Quincy Hospital. They've participated many, many years and they won first place several times for their many imaginative floats. Betty, the parade is uh, an hour old. It's passed by us uh, starting about an hour ago, and it's gone along very well. Right. It's a beautiful day. Uh, folks in Wollaston and North Quincy could probably still run down and catch some of this parade if they didn't want to watch our coverage. Correct. Right. It's, still, it's just a gorgeous day, perfect for uh, parade viewing. Coming into our... Coming into our camera view is yet another antique car, Frank. Let's hope it's and not one let of me ours. see. Uh, I put my trained and practiced eye on this one, and uh, looks like a 1931 Chevrolet. Boy, you're very good, Frank. I don't know how you do this. <clears throat> One of my secrets is I'm old enough to almost have seen some of these on, when they were prominent on the roads. Ah. See some young people enjoying the parade, and that's what the parade is for, the young people. This is a yellow and brown black beauty with orange wheels, as you can see. And it's owned by Mr. and Mrs. Vincent DeCessor of Weymouth. It's powered by a six-cylinder engine. Wow. This is a deluxe model and the top of the line in 1931. And the sale price, uh, brand new, was $990. Wow, couldn't get that today. Coming into our view now is the next float, which is the Quincy College Student Government Association. They've participated for about 10 years, and their theme is Peace on Earth. I think we'll be seeing some of our local band yes. coming up in a few minutes. Coming up the street Coming now. from my end of the city. From the north end of the city. Right. Uh, an exciting football game on Thursday. It's always a shame somebody has to lose. An excellent um, rivalry. Mm -hmm. Very close all the time. No one team has dominated over no. the years. No. See some children beginning to see the uh, North Quincy High School band. It's under the direction of um, Richard Keneally. I've, I've seen this band grow over the years since I've been participating here. I think that's a tribute to Mr. Keneally. the North Quincy High School cheerleaders, and I believe they're going to Florida, Orlando for the um, Citrus Bowl on New Year's Day. Oh, they want a competition, yes. Exciting trip, Bob. It's a traditional North Quincy fight song. to our man in the 
street next who will be uh, interviewing the North Quincy High School homecoming queen and her court. Okay, we're here with the homecoming queen from North Quincy High School, Kelly Duggan. Kelly, how are you today? Good, how are you? Hey, could you introduce us to your friends or your court? This is Sarah Mulvey and this is Annie Bergen. How are you guys liking the parade today, all right? It's nice. Yeah, it's it's great. great. Have you seen Santa Claus yet? No, no. You're looking forward to it, I'm sure. It's a yeah. big crowd. <laughs> okay, Sarah, don't your family come from uh, parade people? Yep. They do, I'm sure. Well, you guys have a nice day and uh, enjoy the rest of the parade. Nice talking to you. Thank you, you too. Okay, North Quincy High School's homecoming, Queen and her court. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Jackie. Great job. And coming into our site now is the North Quincy High School uh, float. It's the Alliance Against Racism, and they've chosen as their theme, Wishing for a United Community. This is their very first time participating, and we welcome them, and we're glad to have them as an addition to the Quincy Festival Parade. First time participant. Coming into our camera view now is a favorite for many years. It's the David Prouty High School Marching Panther Band. wonder where David Prouty High School is. I was. Okay, it's in Spencer and East Brookfield region of the state. Okay. And I imagine that's quite a trip for them. I think it's out near the Worcester area. Yes, many of these units come a long way, yes. so it's a full day between getting here, marching, and then uh, going home. There are 90 members under the direction of George Garber and Chris Constantine. The drum major is Miss Kate McCormis. This lively dedicated group has traveled extensively to the United States, representing the towns of Spencer and East Brookfield in parades and festivals and competitions. The band is a current Class A New England parade champion, and we welcome them. Library Bookmobile is coming into view. Of course, the library has got a building project ongoing. Hopefully, we'll be getting some state money next year, Betty, uh, to enlarge and expand the library at Thomas Crane. It's a beautiful historic library and should be preserved and extended for the community. To our camera's view now is the Abington High School Marching Band. Hi, how you doing? How you doing, guys? It's going along pretty well. It's another large unit, perennial uh, 
winner of many competitions. The Marching Band's 1995 show is an original presentation of music from the recent movie Crimson Tide. The music is under the direction of, let's see, the band director, okay, is Michael H. Smith. And the music is from Crimson Tide, the original score by Hans Zimmer. What a colorful band this is, right? Yes. This is beautiful. surprise member of the parade is Senator John Kerry. <coughs> and there goes Billy Morrow. A lot of credit to Billy Morrow. Uh, does an awful lot of work on this uh, Senator program. Kerry, what a surprise that is for the parade. Bonkers float. I don't get with the <laughs> Coming into sight now, I believe, is the Quincy Firefighters Color Guard. I hope our viewers can see that. Quincy Firefighters Color Guard is stopped before us right now. And coming into view is the Quincy Firefighters Float. They've been uh, winners of uh, prizes from past years. This year their theme is Clara's Wish from the Nutcracker. And look at this Christmas tree, Frank. Can you see it's it? Beautiful. Yes. Whoa. They put a lot of work into this. They are the best overall float in for the past two years. Look at that Christmas tree. There. What an imagination for nutcrackers that look like can, like firemen to me. The float, we should say, is made by the families of the Quincy firefighters under the direction of Bill Ariente. The fire engines now proceeding past us. An engine and a ladder truck coming along. And who's that waving to us? Is that Smokey the Bear in the fire truck? Looks like him. I guess so. coming into view. And they're the 1995 New England Marching Band champions, but I can't quite make out which high school they're from. No. Can you? Oh, it is, New, oh, 
it's the New Bedford High It School. is New Bedford. Yes. We had word that they weren't going to be right, here. Right, but aren't we lucky they are? Uh, the New England. Yeah, the new, the uh, junior high band was here just right. a while and back. This is the senior high, and this is about their 13th or 14th year, and they've won almost every year. Colorful group, aren't they, Frank? Yes, they are, Betty. They're, I was a little disappointed when you heard earlier they weren't going right. to be here. I'm, I'm thrilled they are here. But they did show up. Right. It's another large unit of young people. I see someone that the children are just waiting for. The highlight of the parade from the children's point of view, and I think from everybody's point of view. Right. A very familiar figure on this next float. Right. And uh, do you think he needs any introduction, Frank, or should we? I'll give you the honors to introduce this gentleman. Well, he, he deserves one, even though he doesn't need one. Right, okay. And passing, coming in just in front of City Hall now is uh, Santa Claus. He's waving to the kids. He has his court with him. Yes, little elves. His reindeer, it looks like reindeer, some elves on the uh, on the float. Yeah, I think I even recognize some of those elves. Children that I know. He's passing and right Santa. in front of us now. He's giving us a big wave to the camera. Thanks, Santa. The children wait, and I believe that's Mrs. Claus with him. Yes, yeah, she's with him. She. Uh, Where would Santa be without, without Mrs. Claus? Without a good woman behind him. There you go. That's right. Well, Frank, I think that just about wraps up this year's 1995 Christmas Festival Parade, and quite a sight it was. An excellent parade. Well uh, put on, well organized, and, and just a great job. Tremendous crowd here again, usual. Yeah, the I would say with the warm weather that the uh, crowd is larger than I can remember it in the past couple of years, which is wonderful. And uh, so they'll be going now down to North Quincy High School for the yes, award ceremonies. And we will be covering that live as soon as that happens. And there are awards, I believe, for color guards and for um, the bands as well. That's correct. And they will also announce the float winners. <laughs> at that time, yes. And it's uh, quite a large job to uh, decide all those things, I'm sure. That's right, and uh, it's interesting to note that the torch has been passed this year now. Mike McFarlane has taken over, proved his worth today um, in directing this particular parade as George White uh, steps down after many, many years of, uh, of directing the parade. Yes, and Mike's been a welcome addition. He's a joy to work with, and uh, he's done a great job this year directing us. Um, I want to say thank you once again to my team. I have on my left here Frank McCauley, and on my immediate left, Jack Rama. Well, How was your day. first parade? Well, I'll tell you, it was a great day, and uh, the weather was great. And uh, What did you think of the crowd, Jack? I thought it was a great crowd, and walking around, and uh, they really enjoyed themselves. A lot of smiles, and that's what it's all about, I guess, in Christmas. A lot of smiles coming from everyone, and... Uh, it was just a great day here in Quincy, as it always is. All right. And Frank, what's your quick impression? Well, once again, just a great parade in the tradition of a lot of great parades that have been put on by the festival committee over the years and uh, certainly uh, enjoyed by all, I'm sure. Well, once again, I want to thank you all and say from Quincy Community Television, you can watch uh, the Christmas Festival Parade in its entirety um, many times as the weeks go on. And be sure to tune in also for the live uh, award ceremony from North Quincy High School approximately at 3 p.m. And Monday night, you can once again watch the Thanksgiving Day football rivalry between North and Quincy at 7.30 p.m. on Channel 3. And this is Betty Campbell from Quincy Community Television.
Cablevision, and I want to thank all the volunteer cameramen and crew, as well as the staff of Continental Cablevision, for bringing you the 1995 Christmas Festival Parade. Thank you, everyone, and Merry Christmas. Every year, and I'm sure this year, did the same. City of Quincy Mayor Jim Sheets. Jim, would you like to say a few words? Thank you, George. I want to welcome each and every one of you to the City of Presidents, the City of Quincy. And I only hope that each and every one of you are winners. I know the City of Quincy is winner today with this marvelous parade. My real purpose in coming up here is I would like for the Christmas Festival Committee to all come forward and stand in this area. Come on. Come on. These, come on, let's go, Billy. Get Billy over here. Get over, Billy. These, these are the people. These are the people who all year long prepare for this event, meeting after meeting, hour after hour, inviting bands and floats and and marching units, making sure everything goes well. And I heard this group over here with that chorus that they gave three or four times. And what I want to do is I just want to go three times hip hip hooray for this Christmas festival committee. They've done a marvelous job. Hip hip hooray! Hip hip hooray! Hip hip hooray! Once more, yay! Is Rick Carbon in the uh, audience? Rick Carbon? Rick, could you please come forward? Rick. A little, uh, a little background on Rick. Rick, for the last 10 years, he is a one-man band. He does just about everything imaginable and pleases the youngsters. And at a training on of the Christmas light ceremony, he began to do this in 1984, and his last appearance was last year. He couldn't make it this year. And, you know, the Christmas Festival Committee is very appreciative of the time and the effort, and really what he did for the children in making Christmas what it's all about. And Rick, the Christmas Festival Committee, would like to present this plaque to you for the entertainment that you provided over these past 10 years. Thank you very, very much. Each year, the Christmas Festival Committee runs a theme entry fee, determining what the theme is going to be for each year's Christmas parade. And this year's winner was Miss Bonnie Ray. And Bonnie, would you come up and accept the gift in our appreciation? The theme this year was... The theme for this year was Christmas Wishes on Parade, and you met all the wishes. Quincy High, but North Quincy, this is awesome. <laughs> <Soup>. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. The next award is the Chairman's Award. What we do every year, we select a committee member who has put untold time and effort into the category of responsibilities and the follow through to make the day as successful as today turned out to be. This year's winner, in terms of the Chairman's Award, Paul Kennedy. Would he please come forward? Thank you, 
congratulations, Thank Mr. Thank you very Kennedy. much. Appreciate it. Bob Treasure. Thanks, Bobby. Thank you, sir. There you go. Thank congratulations. You. congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, put that in your office, and then you know what time to leave with. Okay. Um, the next award that we'll give out will be the Color Guard. Do, do we have the Color Guard as yet? Brian Carter will give out the Color Guard Award. I'd like to thank all the Color Guards for participating this year. Uh, we had a, a record number. And uh, this is the senior Color Guards. In third place was Cambridge Police. Are they here? Second place, all the way from Connecticut with the Silver Dolphins Color Guard. Is there a representative here? No, no representative, they've probably gone. Uh, and in first place, and uh, triple award winners this year because uh, a couple times uh, we've missed uh, getting their awards in the past, is the uh, BFW Auxiliary State Color Guard. I'll close my part of the program before we turn it over to the Float Awards by making one more presentation. Each and every year, the Christmas Festival Committee, in a token of appreciation for all the things that the mayor does and working with as a committee, give him a gift and say thank you. So, Mayor, would you please come forward once again? Thank you very much, and Paul, if you're all set with the Float Award winners, and then we'll move into the bands. <laughs> thank you, George. Uh, thank you, George, and uh, welcome everybody to the 43rd uh, Annual Christmas Parade. Float winners, and we'll get started. The first category is the Father Thomas Tanney Award and a $1,500 cash prize, which is our grand prize. This float had to be built by a group, could not be commercially built. And this award goes to Quincy Point Congregational Church. Yeah, they're going to come back up. Just take it out, and uh, they'll come up after. Our first prize uh, winner this year for $1,000 will be Quincy Fire Department.
get that. Yeah. The thing at the same time, they were taking the picture. Oh, that's okay. Shall I go up and give it to them? Whatever. Second prize winner will be North Quincy High School. The remaining title on that was it was the North It was the North Quincy High School Alliance Against Racism was the second place award which we just gave up. For the third and the fourth place awards, actually the third place award was a tie. So we're gonna split the the totals, the third place would have been 500 and the fourth place 250. We're going to split that amongst the two people that tied that. Unusual as it may be, that's what happened. And the tie was between Quincy um, Howes Neck Community and Woodward School. Each will receive. Right. Okay. I'll have them call you. Uh, call you. Here's, uh, get the next one. Our fifth place prize winner, Quincy High School. Okay, I'm sorry. These mixed up, but that's all right. They don't okay. care. <laughs> that's all. Yeah. <laughs> that's all I Sixth place for two hundred and fifty dollars is Quincy Hospital. Anybody from Quincy Hospital? <laughs> Watch your step there, friend. Yes. Check on the other. Okay, they they, they know that. The, uh, Quincy Point Car. They they have the picture taken. Okay, well you can can you bring them up to them? Because they already right, had it done. The, we'll get it. I, I don't want to announce it again. Okay. Here you go. And, uh, this is the uh, no wait a minute. Why don't we Fran, why don't we wait until after and we'll bring that up to them, okay? All right. All right. Okay. Uh, next category is the Mayor's Trophy, which is the best Quincy float. And if I can ask Mayor Sheets to come up and present that trophy.
this trophy will go to the QC PBA. There's nobody here from them. They just, oh, yeah. they just okay. they didn't come. And, um, okay, so we're also the next category is the. Uh, okay, can I have your attention? The next category is the best commercial float, and that would be Jack Conway. And last but not least is the best specialty category. And that this year will go to Bonkers 19. have the drum majors and color guard captains of the Division I bands, which will be Norton, Bourne, and Holbrook. Right over here, please. Drum major. Yep. In Division One, the award for the best drum major and or drum majors goes to the drum major of Norton High School. front in Division One goes to Norton High School. The award for the high percussion score in Division One goes to Bourne High School.
The award for the high music score in Division I goes to Norton High School. Okay, I want to know what she's chewing on. Yeah, no, GE. That was music. That was GE. Oh, well, that doesn't make any difference. Right, well, we'll just switch and the award for the high general effects, whoops, maybe. The award for the high general effects score goes to Norton High School. Here's our answer. That oh, damn thing keeps on coming apart. Okay. In third place in Division One, in third place with a score of 6 7. 0.667.6, Holbrook High School. In second place in Division One with a score of 71.3, 71.3, Born High School. And in first place in Division I, with a score of 74.6, 74.6, Norton High School. <laughs> May we have the drum majors and, and color guard captains of Division II bands, please. The drum majors are Quincy High, Douglas High, Magdalene Heart of Mary, Pittsfield High, Chickadee Comprehensive, and North Quincy. The awards in Division Two. In Division Two, the award for the best drum major and our drum majors goes to the drum major of Douglas High School. In Division Two, the award for the best color guard and or band front goes to the band front or color guard from North Quincy High School. The high percussion score in Division Two goes to the band of Immaculate Heart of Mary. The award for the high music score in Division Two goes to North Quincy High School. And the award for the high general effects score is presented to Immaculate Heart of Mary. In Division Two, in third place, 
In third place with a score of 77.9, 77.9, Chicopee Comprehensive High School. In second place in Division II, with a score of 83.6, or 83.7, excuse me, 83.7, Douglas High School. And in first place in Division II, with a score of 85.1, 85.1, Immaculate Heart of Mary. May we have the drum majors and color guard captains of Division Three schools, David Crowdy and Abby Crowdy. We might as well ask the Division IV band, the drum major of the Bedford High School, to please come down. Billy, Billy. Actually, the drum major of the junior high school band will accept the awards for the high school band. In Division III, first of all, the award for the best drum major or drum majors goes to the drum major of David Prouty High School. And our color guard goes to the color guard of David Prouty High School. The award for the high percussion score goes to the percussion line of David Prouty High School. And the award for the high music score goes to David Prouty High School. And the award for the high general effects score goes to Abington High School. In second place in Division Three, with a score of 91.0, 91.0, Abington High School. And in first place in Division Three, with a score of 92.0, 92.0, David Prouty High School. Before we present the Division Four Awards, we do have a trophy of appreciation for their participation this afternoon. I, this is, I think, their third year in a row. I, this is the New Bedford Junior High School. As you all know, we don't have a junior high school class, but you did very well, kids. Thank you. And the Division Four awards to our Division Four champions at New Bedford High School with a score of 92.7. Thank you. George, you still here?
Thanks for coming. Hopefully you'll all be back with us next year. Thanks for everything and a Merry